we here! We're finally here! Here we are! With Phoenix Games, but it's 2007. It's not the final Phoenix Games video, don't get me wrong, but it's the final one with loads of games. The final one with, like, like absurd amount of video games. So yeah, seems like 2007 was the final active year for Phoenix Games. Now don't get me wrong, they did go on to make some games later, but on a, whoa, on a much smaller scale than what you have here. 2007 seems to be their very final year in mass producing these shite video games. And today we are looking at everything that 2007 has to offer. Everything 2007 has to offer. And I can tell you, it is, for the most part, and I mean, I say most part, I mean like 90%, maybe 95, maybe 98%, complete and utter shit. You know, I thought I'd tell you that walking in, because obviously this is, this is Phoenix Games, so was, you can kind of expect Phoenix Games is going to be trash, complete dog shit. So yes, let's dive right into 2007 for the publisher Phoenix Games. Now the first game we have up to the plate is Dead Eye Jim, and if this title screen tells you anything, you know exactly what to expect. Yep, it's uh, it's basically a PS2 port of Wanted with more levels. That's basically what this is. Remember Wanted back on the PlayStation One? Yep, that's it's just, it's the same game just with maybe some new levels. <sighs> like this is meant to be a light gun game where you kind of like run across. You just shoot the same enemies over and over again. You get points. Yeah, there's like three different types of guns. You have pistols, you have machine guns, and then you have these shotguns. And that's it. You just go around, keep shooting the same enemies. You got three different types of enemies. One, like, I think there's, you got white and, what were these white shirt and brown shirt enemies. Um, they seem to shoot pretty much the same kind of pattern at you. That, so I don't see really the difference between them. Then you got the blue enemies that shoot like machine guns at you and then you have the red enemies that fire dynamite at you it's the same boring repetitive shit that you had in the wanted series and obviously this is a template for a lot of different games this is the te same template used for shoot among others as well and it's just complete trash it's obviously naps team yeah dead eye jim fucking should have died and he should have been just dead dead jim like literally just fucking just double dead Next up is Street Warrior, which has one of the worst uh, cover arts I've ever seen. Just look at that. That's that's beautiful right there. So yeah, Street Warrior, it's the same fucking template that was used for KO Kings and the same template that was used for WWC uh, Wrestling Championship, whatever the fucking hell it was called, but turned into a scrolling beat-em-up. Well, not really a scrolling beat-em-up. You stay in the same area and they throw a bunch of enemies at you. You don't really have any combos. You just keep wailing at them with the same fucking moves that you had. You can still use the wrestling moves that were available to you in in the WWC game. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's the same fucking shit, but they decided to turn it into a 3D fucking beat-em-up. Oh my god, it's, it's terrible. It's fucking terrible, it plays terrible. It is uh, just a recycled game again. Yeah, waste of time, don't ever play it, it's a waste of fucking existence. Next up we have Power Volleyball, which I believe to be based on a template from Cindy's Caribbean Holiday, Cindy's Fashion World, um, Girls Zone. The cover kind of gives it away that it's uh, similar to that. I'm pretty sure whoever developed those games will probably develop this game. It's a volleyball game, and does it play well? Well, it's okay. I've never really liked volleyball games, and by far it is 100% better than The Volleyball, which is a part of the Simple 1500 series, but that isn't really saying much. Um, is it better than Volleyball Championship or whatever it was called that was a part of the Simple 2000 series? No, it's not. Uh, it's just basic volleyball. There isn't really much else to say about it. Is it functional? Yes. Does it look good? No. Do I like volleyball as a video game concept? No, it doesn't really play well. I kind of feel like the camera should be zoomed out and you can see the entire court, but instead the camera seems to follow the ball. And sometimes you don't feel like you like, I don't, I don't know where the fuck my character is at this moment in time. There's a little cursor that's supposed to kind of tell you, but I don't really feel like it helps. If I be completely honest, I feel like when the ball comes over to my side of the court, my character's a million miles away from the ball. 
yeah, um, I just kind of feel like the camera should be zoomed out and you can see the whole court and then you wouldn't have any issue with it. You know, you can see the whole court in tennis. Imagine if you could only see your side of the court in tennis. Would be fucking good, wouldn't it? Funny that. So yeah, power volleyball. Does it function? Yes. But is it good? No. And here we have probably the most entertaining concept as a video game that Phoenix Games probably ever did. White Van Racer. Because... Yeah, I really wanted a, a racing game that featured vans. I really did. Mm, yeah, and uh, the name White Van Racer kind of implies something else. I'm not going to go there, but it kind of does. So, White Van Racer. Probably one of the most well-known Phoenix Games video games out there. How does it play? It plays like shit. It plays like one of those uh, typical mere mortals fucking racing games. But we're mortals. There's no title card. They don't seem to have any link to this game from what I can tell. But it's using the same kind of template that they used for their, for their racing games. Here. The environments look shit. I think this is somewhere in England. Who the fuck knows? Right? Um... Yeah, it, it, does it function as a racing game? Sure, it was fine. The, the turning's fine, everything's fine. It, the controls are definitely clunky, but as to be expected with a Phoenix Games racing game. But uh, yeah, it's it's just the same fucking racing game that you've played before, developed by Kung Fu, rechanged their name to Mere Mortals, and then struck their name from the record in this case. Because it doesn't seem there's many... A lot of these two games that released in 2007 don't have a developer assigned against their name unless it's something like Data Design Interactive. It's, it's very surprising, that, isn't it? Maybe they didn't want to associate themselves with, the Phoenix, with their, their developer name with these uh, with these games anymore. But yeah, they kept, they kept making them, though, yeah. So yeah, White Van Racer. Very basic racing game, very clunky, and uh, as, a, as a joke, sure, funny. But uh, hey, besides anything else, no. We just had one racing game, why not have another? Next up we have Moto X Maniac. What I like to call Moto X Mayhem, because this whole entire game is fucking mayhem. This game is stupid, and guess what? It's using the same fucking template that White Van Racer uses. I'm not joking. The racing, the controls, they all feel they're, they're based on the same template. The difference here is, is that White Van Racer, for some reason, controls better. Now, maybe they decided to make the controls a bit more slippier because we're on dirt. Who knows? Because this is dirt bikes, yeah? But it doesn't make the game any better. It makes the game worse. It makes the controls worse. The game's controls are clunky as it is. Why Why would you make it any more annoying? Then you have the chance of going out of bounds, which happens way more often than you think it does. Like, you just think, oh yeah, I'll cut that corner. Like, right here, you see? You think you could like, jump across and cut that corner there. Nope, out of bounds. It's a pain in the fucking ass. Uh, the game controls horribly, and yeah, it's the same fucking racing template that we've seen before. It's fucking dog shit. Next up, we have Jello. Oh, my mistake. Next up, we have Monster Eggs. Wait, no, it's actually Jello. There you go. What else do I have to say about this, right? This is fucking Jello. If you've seen my Phoenix Games, but it's 2006 video. You might be aware of Jello. It's a puzzle game where you just gotta match things together. So you see there's four there, you click it, there you go, you got four. You get points based on the more that you get, right? And Jello was exactly that. It was a puzzle matching game. And guess what Monster Eggs is? The exact same fucking game, just that the Jello has been replaced with Monster Eggs. And I'm not joking, it is the exact same fucking game. There's no difference at all. It's ridiculous. It's just absolutely abysmal, if I be completely honest. It's terrible. So yeah, Monster Eggs. I imagine it's made by the same fucking developer as Jello, and yeah, it's the same fucking game. It just should never, never play it. Waste of fucking time. If this main menu screen is anything to go by, you know exactly what this game's gonna be, don't you? Here we go. Oh, look at that. Go-kart rally. And oh, look, the same kind of loading screen. Oh, look, the same kind of fucking gameplay. It's the same racing template again. The same racing template used in White Van Racer, and the same racing template used in Moto X Maniac. But with go-karts. Ooh, I'm so excited! How does it play? Exactly the same. It plays better than Moto X Maniac, don't get me wrong. Um, it plays about as well as fucking White Van Racer plays. But is there any difference? No, it's the same fucking game. There's one thing I will mention with these racing games. Uh, they don't seem to play very well in the emulator, and they t the music tends to get stuck on a fucking loop. 
it's really weird, so I ended up having to play my own kind of own music while recording this footage. But yeah, um, it's the same, but besides that, it's the same janky, fucking clunky controls from the previous games. The turning here seems to be fucking a bit more shit than White Van Racer, but at least it's more functional than Moto X Maniac, which isn't saying much. It's the same fucking template. It's fucking shit. When I saw the cover of this game, I didn't know quite what to expect, but then the title- then I saw the title screen. Again, here's the cover. Then I told it, saw the title screen and I was like, oh! Look, it's another fucking shoot clone! And I'm not even joking, this is literally shoot on PS2. They've changed a few things here and there, but one of the levels that pops up is literally the identical to shoot. I actually remember the level. Yeah, it's the, sa it's the same game as shoot, but on the PlayStation 2 and renamed as Sniper Assault. And I, how is it even called Sniper Assault? You're not even doing anything sniper related. Are they the snipers, the ones in the windows? The, the name of the game makes no fucking sense. Am I the sniper? Are you the sniper? There's no sniping in this game. Who's the sniper? Dora, who's the sniper here, right? Who's the sniper swiper? I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's the same game. Fuck this game. Fuck that, its entire existence. Let's move on. Say hello to another game I had no clue what to expect based on the cover of the game. Roller Coaster Fun Fair. Turns out it's a bunch of mini games. So here's one where you just shoot a bunch of cardboard cutouts in a window. Here's another one where you're in a in a airboat, whatever, hovercraft racing, yeah. Where the footage is lagging for some reason. Here's mini golf. Which doesn't play very well and doesn't control very well, as you can kind of see here. The power doesn't make no sense. <laughs> <sighs> and here's bumper cars, where I drive around in circles while these guys chase me like a bunch of retards. I'm not even joking. The whole entire point in this game is to survive as long as possible. You will go do is this, and you can literally just put this, and you could do this for hours. And finally, here's table football. That's what this game is. It's just a collection of five mini games, and they all play like shit. I'm, I'm being honest. Crazy Golf played better than the mini golf game in this game. Yeah, and the cover kind of fools you because you, you don't know what to expect. The name, Roller Coaster Funfair. I didn't think it was going to be like arcade games that are featured in the fucking. <laughs> featured in the. It, 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 what you would kind of see, I guess, in a theme park. Yeah, shit. Next up, we have Krabby Adventure. What a great name for a game. I had no clue what to expect going into this, but it definitely wasn't this. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty familiar. With this puzzle game, I've seen it before, quite a few times. The name escapes me, don't get me wrong, I don't fucking remember what it's called, but I've seen this puzzle game before. And it's just copying that, and um, no, I'm not very good at it. There you go. Is it functional? Sure. Is it good? No. And there you go, that, that's Krabby Adventure. Next up, we have Iron Chef, quite possibly the most expensive Phoenix Games video game in existence, and that is not an exaggeration. And what is it? This. It's a fucking Android, iPhone, App Store, shitty platformer game where you knock down fruit into a basket and avoid enemies. It looks like it belongs on the Android store, on the Google Play store. It looks like it belongs on the iOS store. It looks like it belongs on there for free. And yet, it's ridiculously priced online. <laughs> I just don't understand it. So yeah, um, how does it play? It plays like shit. It's, it's just really shitty platformer. And for, you, for, for, for the money that they want for this game online, you could just might as well just go treat yourself to a nice dinner, have a nice day out, all, all for the price of what this game is, has to offer. It's just not worth it. Don't pay it. Don't pay it. It's not worth it. It, yeah, it wasn't even worth me playing the fucking game, if I'll be completely honest. Complete waste of fucking time. Hey, you want another shitty Android App Store fucking game? Welcome to Steam Express. Oh, look. Look at that, it's a fucking puzzle game where you gotta take the train from one side to the other and it looks and plays like a fucking iPhone game that you would play for free, you'd play for a minute and go, this is dog shit. Yeah. And that's Steam Express, ladies and gentlemen. 
don't don't play it. No, no, I'm not going to talk any more about it. You can see what this game is. It's complete fucking garbage. Next up, we have Wacky Zoo GP, and let me guess. I bet you can guess what this is going to be, don't you? Oh, could it be that it's this template, same fucking racing template we've seen before, used by three different games we've seen so far, plus more in the past? No, it couldn't be that, could it? No, of course not. No, let's make a fucking shitty racing game that plays worse than White Van Racer with shitty power-ups and with cartoon-like characters in a cartoon-like world that looks like fucking dog shit. Yeah, I mean, let's do that. Let's just make that game. That's what they sat down and said to themselves as they thought of the uh, concept of this game. Wacky Zoo GP. I don't, I can't, I can't, what can I say about this game that hasn't already been said? Does it play well? No. The controls are still clunky. Does it play... Any better than White Van Racer? No, it actually plays worse. It plays better than Moto X Maniac, but I ain't saying much. Uh, the only addition this game has in, that's different is it has power-ups, and the power-ups are not good at all. Yeah, Wacky Zoo GP. Piece of fucking shit. Look, I got clipped here as well. Look at that. Temporarily got clipped there. Fucking great game design there, gay guys. Next up, we have Ocean Commander, developed by Cyber Planet Interactive. Oh, look, we actually have a developer assigned to this one, instead of it just saying Phoenix Games. Look at that. So what is it? It's a, uh, a side-scrolling shooter. Is it good? No. <laughs> Concept is interesting. You're like a mechanical shark thing going around shooting other ships underwater you know you have a, a like a ship based on a swordfish a ship based on a whale yeah cool concepts you know like a, a vertical shooter where each of the ships are uh, based on different sea creatures that'd be pretty cool but uh, in execution it's uh, a really bare budget basic fucking scrolling shooter that if I be completely honest, you know the fucking the shoot the shooting on the Simple 1500 series, also known as Shooter Space Shot, that plays better. That fucking plays better. And that had baby hands. Whatever, forget. It's like fucking PTSD for me. Yeah. So yeah, Ocean Commander. Uh, cool concept. Poorly executed. Plays really shit. There's like, what's the point of even having this fucking reticle? Because each time you shoot a bullet, it shoots a fucking missile as well. The missiles are homing, the bullets aren't. Again, you got this fucking... Sh Basically, like, the left analog stick controls the movement, the right analog stick controls where your aiming is, and, uh, yeah, why can't it just be a basic scrolling shooter instead of having controls that just don't feel very well? At least you got loads of health, I guess. Imagine dying in one hit in this game. Yeah, I wouldn't see myself lasting long with that. Do I even need a fucking bother? You know what this is. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fucking bother. This is Legend of Hercules. What is it? Oh, it's a fucking PS2 port of Hercules. What is it? It's a fucking movie with shitty little side games that didn't even emulate properly, as you could only see half the film. You want memory games and slide puzzles and jigsaw puzzles? This is the game for you. Yeah, dog shit. Don't ever fucking touch it in your whole entire existence. Oh, look, you know what this is, don't you? You know who developed this? Guess what? Brain in a jar. No, I, that's what it says on GameFQs. GameFQs lies. This is Aqua Pacific. And it's the same fucking formula. The movie doesn't work on the emulator at all. And you have the same shitty mi mi mini games that the Code Monkeys produce. Yeah, it's, it's dog shit. Don't ever fucking play it. Next up, we have whatever the fuck this is. Character models look strange. Oh, this is a weird one, right? Then you get to the title screen. I don't tell you what it is. Well, guess what this is? This is Extreme Sprint 3010. Well, just look at it. This game is less about extreme and less about sprinting. And hell, this who knows? This probably isn't the year 3010. The game's title is literally a fucking lie. Welcome to the slowest sprinting game I've ever seen in existence. Like, I'm, I'm not joking. I, I don't know many fucking video games that's based around sprinting, but I've never known a game be so fucking slow as this game. So, the name of the game is Run Around Dodging Things While This Steamroller Chases After You. You know, if, you, if I was Jotaro Kujo, I might be scared, but no. 
the, the, the steamroller is really slow. Your character's really slow. It's really easy to hit things. You have a jump and a roll. Did I mention this game is really slow? For a game that has the name fucking Sprint in the title? Yeah. So, how does it play? Plays like shit. What else did you expect? What's, what did you expect? <laughs> so yeah, Extreme Sprint 3010. Fucking shit. Do I even need to fucking bother? This is Aqua Pacific's Peter Pan, and here's a fucking memory game. Enjoy. There you go. You like the memory games? Yeah! I love the memory games! <sighs> Welcome to our first data design interactive video game for this collection, Kids Sports Basketball. And yeah, just like the other kids sports game as games I played, it's based on a template. Not even joking, Data Design Interactive did the exact same thing as Phoenix Games. They made games on a template. All of the kids' sports games are, in the, are on the same exact fucking template. Kids' sports football, or soccer, whatever it was called. Kids' sports hockey, ice hockey. It was, it, they're all on the same template. They all play the same, with the same power-ups, just with different sports. And that's literally it. In all fairness, at least their templates play a hell of a lot better than anything Phoenix Games can fucking muster, I fucking swear. At least this is a functional video game. It's not great, it's not the best basketball game out there, but at least it functions and it does its fucking job as a basketball video game. At least I don't feel like I'm having trouble in this game. I'm not good at it, don't get me wrong, but at least I have a feeling I at least I have a feeling of control in this video game. Whereas in all of the Phoenix Games fucking video games, you never really feel like you have any control. The, the controls are just <laughs> every fucking time. So yeah, Kids Sports Basketball. Mediocre uh, basketball video game with the same template as Data Design uses in all of its other sports fucking kids sports games. Next up we have Caveman Rock. And oh look, the same kind of art design as the previous bloody Iron Chef game. But this time it's a puzzle game. Woo! It's a puzzle game that you could find on the Android App Store for free. Yay, probably you couldn't find this game on your phone back in 2007, but you definitely could find this game online on Miniclip or something. Pretty sure you probably could. Um, yeah, it's functional, I guess. Fine. I don't really like the little white outlines it has around all the characters. It kind of feels like they just cut them out and didn't really put the effort in to cutting them out of whatever the fucking art media thing they stole it from, whoever knows, right, with these things. I'm pretty sure it's developed by the same people that made Iron Chef. Just the, the cutesy art style gives it away every time. Next up is Cartoon Kingdom, and it's the same fucking game as Kiddies Party Pack. Remember that game back in 2006? Yeah, it's the same game, basically. Let's not include any of the movies and then that are featured from the series that they're featured off. And instead just feature all the mini games plus a bunch of shitty dress up games that you could find online that probably had done better. Yeah. Shit. Next up we have another data design interactive video game. And it's off road extreme. It's a racing game. It's functional, it's 100% better than any racing game that Phoenix Games seems to fucking shit out. Uh, probably because it's Data Design Interactive. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange world you live in when the games by Data Design Interactive, which are generally uh, considered to be absolutely fucking terrible, are still better than anything that Phoenix Games can fucking pump out on their own. Or mere mortals in that case. Uh, does it play like another data design interactive game I played? Yeah, sure, it plays like that Monster Trucks Extreme Arena Edition game I played back, uh, back in, what was that, 2005? Yeah, it plays the same as that. Does it function as a racing game? Sure. Uh, you don't really have power-ups, you can fix your vehicle, and there's boosts. That's it. Goodbye, that's, that's it. Let's go on to the next game. Next up, we have another des data design interactive video game, Mythmaker's Orbs of Doom. Mythmaker seems to be the little franchise they tried to make. And yeah, basically this is Hamst... What was it? Fucking Habit Trail, Hamster Ball, but worse. I'm not even joking. Habit Trail, Hamster Ball, I'm pretty sure, was developed by Data Design Interactive. 
I don't know, I can't even remember who the developer was for that game. But that plays better than this. So this is like a monkey ball clone. And it, but if it played like absolute fucking dog shit. Now I've never played a, a monkey ball game in my life. I like to think it plays better than this. I mean, like seriously, the level design is dog shit. The uh, the, the controls are dog shit. You can't get any momentum. Look, I get stuck here because my character keeps losing every momentum he has whenever he hits the bottom there. Yeah, it's it's terrible, and it made me want to hurt myself. This game. Yeah, no, don't ever play Mythmaker's Orbs of Doom. Probably the worst Mythmaker's game in existence, I'd imagine. I don't know. I haven't played some of them. I've played one more part of this collection, but there's another game. But I can imagine this one's the worst. You thought we were done with those Phoenix Games racing games, didn't you? I know you felt that way. Welcome to Pro Biker 2. Quite possibly the worst racing game Phoenix Games has ever made. I'm not even fucking exaggerating there. The controls on this are terrible. So basically, not only does this look like Moto X Maniac, Moto X Maniac's controls were better than this. Like, literally, you turn and pretty much sometimes do a complete 180 on the turn. The control, look, I did it there, completely by accident. And it happens multiple times. The c turning controls in this game are terrible. The courses in this game are literally copied from Moto X Maniac. But the difference is, is that you're on a bicycle. You're on like a, a like a, a mountain bike, not a not a mo not a dirt bike. That's the only difference. This is the worst Phoenix Games racing game. The turning alone makes it the worst Phoenix Games racing game in existence. Don't ever play this game in your whole entire life. Don't do it. Don't do it! Fear the multi-layered elephant of death! Mambo! Sorry, I just wanted you to have a, a uncut couple of seconds of footage there. Without any commentary whatsoever. So yeah, this is Mambo. And I'm pretty sure this is developed by the same people that made Iron Chef and uh, Caveman Rock. Um, quite possibly the worst game out of those three. It's a uh, it's a game where you got to go around. It's a puzzle game. You got to go around, move stuff, collect stuff, and uh, dodge the plants. But it controls like absolute fucking shite. Oh, beautiful! I hated I hated this game. I hated playing this game. This game plays absolutely horribly. One of the worst video games in terms of controls I've ever played. It's almost over, it's almost over. Another data design interactive game, another Myth Makers game. Say hello to Myth Makers Super Kart GP. A kart racing game featuring the acclaimed Myth Makers cast of characters. Yeah, does it play well? No, it actually plays worse than off-road extreme in my opinion. Quite easily can you get clipped on the fucking architecture of the courses or the tracks or whatever you want to refer to them as and get turned up on your head. See? You can literally go up something by accident because you hit a boost or something and it will flip your car in the air and then you end up, look, there you go, hit that barrel and just went bloop. Power-ups are basic, they do their job, they're just trying to copy Mario Kart here, let's be honest, but they didn't do a very good job of it because it plays like absolute fucking shit. Don't get me wrong, it ain't no orbs of doom, but uh, as you can see, it ain't any good either. It's not a good kart racing video game. Fucking, there's so many better ones out there. Don't ever play this game. Next up, we have Fruitfall. Not that you would know based on this title screen, right? Guess what? This is the only game in the whole entire year that has Mere Mortals fucking development against it. Like, Mere Mortals is listed as the, as the developer. Mere Mortals had a title card for this game. It's the only fucking one. Mere Mortals actually admitted to making. And guess what? It's a fucking shitty puzzle game where you gotta get fruit together. As you can see here, I gotta get that apples together and... Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a puzzle game, and it's uh, not really my thing. It's functional, sure, but uh, not really my thing. Kind of boring, if I be completely honest. I don't understand the whole spooky vibe that this game seems to want. Don't get it. Yeah, 
meh. And the final game we have here is Gecko Blaster, which looks to be a shitty block Kuzushi game. Shitty breakout game with geckos. That's it. And it's the only game, it's the first and only game that I haven't been able to get to work. So this is someone else's footage I'm showing you here. The only game. This was the only one I couldn't get working. Don't get me wrong, it works in the emulator, just it doesn't recognize any controller, literally. The game tells me, please plug in an analog controller. There is a fucking analog controller. I've, I've had this issue before, and how I used to fix it, with, because I've had this issue with some games. KO Kings had that issue. Um, how I fixed it was simply playing it on an older version of PCSX2. That's the way I fixed it. It's the only way I was able to fix it, and that method didn't work this time around. I even tried multiple different controllers, and nope, couldn't get it to get, couldn't get it to work. But does it really matter in the grand scheme of things? No, because it's a uh, it's just a shitty fucking block Kuzushi breakout game featuring geckos, gecko blaster. So yeah, we've done it, ladies and gentlemen. We've gone through 2007. Do I feel defeated? Sure, because I've had enough of playing these Phoenix Games video games. I've had a go on almost every single Phoenix Games video game in existence at this point. There's a couple left. When I say a couple, I mean fucking two games left, literally, for me to play. And then that's it. One game came out in 2008, and one game came out in 2009. And then that's it. I'm so glad I'm, that the journey is almost over. Probably, I'm probably the only person in existence that's played every single Phoenix Games video game. Yeah, okay, I didn't play Gecko Blaster. Well, technically I did play Gecko Blaster, because I got to the fucking... I got to one point in the game, so I did actually play it. Didn't get to the point where I could actually physically play the game as intended, but technically I played it. But yeah, um, it's, it's been a journey and a half. Um, I hated every single game in this collection. I'm going to be honest, there was no redeeming factors in this whole entire collection. In 2007, there was no redeeming games. Every single one was fucking shit. And I'm so happy to be done with this, you know? When I, re when I return to Phoenix Games, it's going to be one game. And when I return to it again after that, it's going to be one game. It's going to be brilliant. It's just one fucking game I have to look at. <sighs> it's been a journey, ladies and gentlemen. But Phoenix Games... I hope it fucking never comes back. I really do. Hope it never comes back. I'm dead serious, Phoenix Games. You better never fucking come back! Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.